Hi, I'm Ginger Rem. Hi, I'm Martine LaDuke. We're at Boyd Hill Nature Preserve, and this is All, All About, About Water. Water. It's all about water, isn't it? Water keeps us alive. And another thing that we need to survive is oxygen. So just as water goes through the water cycle, oxygen goes through our environment as well. We breathe in air, we use the oxygen, and the gas that we expel is called carbon dioxide. Well, how does that oxygen get replaced in the air? Fortunately, plants need carbon dioxide to create food. So when we breathe out the carbon dioxide, the leaves of the plants will take in the carbon dioxide, combine that with water and sunlight, and the leaf will expel or release oxygen for us to breathe. So it's a perfect relationship. Did you know that aquatic life or life under the water also needs oxygen to survive? The oxygen that's in the water that the aquatic life uses is called dissolved oxygen. Let's look at some water and let's talk about the oxygen that the fish will use in order to survive. The amount of dissolved oxygen in the water is a great indicator of the water's quality. So, we measure dissolved oxygen in parts per million. We're gonna call that PPM for short. In Florida, the water's pretty warm, and so we call those kind of fish that live down here warm water fish. And warm water fish need about five parts per million of oxygen in the water in order to survive. If the oxygen goes below that, like a level of three, the fish will start to get stressed and could get sick and start to get diseases. And if the level goes down to two parts per million of dissolved oxygen, the fish will actually start to die. So let's talk about what increases the oxygen level in the water. Where does the oxygen come from to get into the water? Well, one place is from the atmosphere. If there's big waves or waterfalls or rapids, that will fold some of the oxygen from the air into the water and increase the oxygen level. The other way that oxygen gets into our water is through photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is when the plants take in the carbon dioxide and use that sunlight and water and create food for themselves. And then they will expel oxygen into the water for the fish to be able to survive. So underwater plants produce oxygen for the fish to be able to use. So what could make the oxygen level go down or decrease the oxygen level? Well, first of all, water temperature. Warmer water can't hold as much oxygen as cooler water. So if we have a pond and we take away all the trees and plants around that pond to build houses, the sun's gonna beat down on that pond and warm up the water, and the water isn't gonna be able to hold as much oxygen as if the water were cooler. Another thing that decreases or lowers the oxygen level is decaying organic matter. So there's gonna be dead leaves, dead sticks, and even dead animals in the water. Bacteria decompose that, and when the bacteria work on the decaying plant matter, it's going to use oxygen. Now, there's going to normally be dead leaves and sticks in the pond, right? But what if we have uh, dead leaves and cut grass in our yard, and we use our blower, and we blow it down those street drains? Well, you know those street drains lead into the ponds and the creeks and the rivers, right? That's putting extra organic matter in the pond for the bacteria to be able to decompose more things and therefore use up more of the oxygen that the fish need. Then the third thing that decreases or lowers the oxygen level in the water is fertilizer. Again, if we put fertilizer on our lawn before it starts raining or during the rainy season, that fertilizer washes into our water. And what does fertilizer do? It helps your grass to grow taller, greener, and faster. What well, also will help the plants in the water to grow more. There is um, algae in water. And if too much algae grows, that's called an algae bloom. Do you know that some types of algae only live for three days? So when that algae starts to die off, here come the bacteria again. They're gonna decompose all that dead algae and start to use up the oxygen that's in the water again. So that will also decrease the oxygen level of the water. So we're gonna test the water today and see what the oxygen level is. We hope that it's at least five parts per million or higher. All right, so here I am at the creek, and we're gonna collect our water sample the right way so that we can do our dissolved oxygen test. I'm gonna take the cup of water, and I'm gonna put it under the water upside down, 
I'm gonna turn it toward the current so that the current runs into the water for a while. Screw the lid on while it's underwater, and then our sample's ready. When you test the water for oxygen, you want to do it immediately, as soon as you take your water sample. So I'm gonna unscrew the lid, and we're going to do the oxygen test right away, and we're also gonna take the temperature right away. Because remember, the warmer the water is, the less ox dissolved oxygen the water can hold. Now the temperature we're getting in Celsius, because we're doing science, is about 30 degrees 0.7, 30 degrees 0.8. Now in Fahrenheit, that's 87. That's a pretty good uh, water temperature for Florida. I guess all the rain that we had Sunday might have cooled it off a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and get the water in my vial. And I'm going to do it the same way I collected the water sample. Upside down, turn it right side up. You want to make sure the vial is filled all the way to the top so that there's no air in the vial. We're going to add the oxygen tablets, the dissolved oxygen tablets, right away. We're going to put both of these in. Then we're going to invert the vial for four minutes. We're not going to shake it up. We're just going to go up and down like this for four minutes. There's the timer. All the tablets seem to be dissolved, and now we need to let this just sit for five more minutes. There goes the timer. Time to check the color of our water in our vial with the dissolved oxygen chart. Here's the chart. It goes zero parts per million, no oxygen, four parts per million, and eight parts per million. And it's not zero because it's not clear, but it's not as dark as four. So it's somewhere between zero and four. What do you think, two or three parts per million? That's not a very high oxygen level, is it? When I look at the water body, I notice that there aren't a lot of uh, plants growing underwater, creating the oxygen. And the water isn't really making any waves or rapids or waterfalls, is it? So it's relying mostly on just the atmosphere to put oxygen in the water. Next week, we're gonna look at different bodies of water. You're gonna look at the body of water and you're going to determine if you think the dissolved oxygen level is high or low. And then we'll test the water and we'll see if you're right. This video series is brought to you by the Pinellas County School System along with the Southwest Florida Water Management District. I'm Martine LaDuke and I'll see you next time.